Well, welcome to the Mendota Ranch. I'm uh, moving a game camera right now. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that, you know, you see all the big deer that we raise out here. So this is a low fence ranch. Um, we um, have, you know, 26,000 acres. We've got kind of my herd population would be like, oh, about 150, you know, mule deer, 150 whitetail. I'm gonna climb over. And we keep it that way on purpose. So a lot of people think, well, you know, we just got something special out here. We can grow big, big genetics, or we have, you know, great genetics, and we do this, we do that. Well, there's a lot of things we actually do to grow big deer. So, like, it, um, I'll show you a video right now of a. Um, this is a deer that his name is Mendota Max. He's a, probably the top deer on the ranch right now. He's a five-year-old deer. He uh, probably gonna score 260, maybe a little more. Just a beautiful deer, just the kind of deer you just love to see. And and I won't shoot him. Uh, and what I do with like a deer like this, because I enjoy watching them. I mean, I, those deer like that are just a, just so beautiful to walk around. But I will pick his sheds up. So like shoot, say we'll shoot a management buck and I'll take the cake from the management buck. And then I will pick the sheds up from Mendo to Max and I'll get those mounted on a management buck. Uh, cape. So then I essentially got the deer on the wall if that's, you know, if that's what your goal is and, and kind of, you know, save it. But but a lot of things that we do, that a lot, and I see a lot of people kind of screwing stuff up, but how we do it, so here, here's the, here's what we're doing right now. It's late fall, it's cold as hell. Um, we, we're doing deer surveys now, and so what's a deer survey? So deer surveys, we get in helicopter, we fly a grid of the ranch, we're counting the deer. Uh, either side of the helicopter gives us you know, so we know how many deer we got, mule deer, whitetail, all dad, uh, antelope, quail, and coyotes. We count everything from the helicopter. Um, that gives us a pretty good idea of what we got. Now, we'll also do what's called a browse um, survey. So deer don't graze grass. Like we do, like if we're doing cows, we'd be looking at the grass and what deer graze. We look, we do a browse. So we'll go around in certain spots and we'll look at what deer browse on. So browse would be like leaves and, and stuff like that. Like, so you can see like right here at this feeder, there's a, there's a lot, it's a high traffic area. So you see, I can see like a browse line. So you can see a line like this high where the deer can reach and eat. So you can see just a browse line right here. Of course, you're gonna have that it, right here at the deer feeder. So, you know, we're talking about a browse line. So can you kind of see me like right here? You see this line? I'm kind of walking. Like see all these leaves are gone here, right? All those leaves are gone. So this is about as far as a deer can reach is right here. And so this is kind of your browse line. But like I said, this is where, this is a heavy traffic area. So we wouldn't do a browse survey here. We're going to get away from here to do a browse survey. And we'll be getting over here to these, these bushes like this so come over here and look at this so see so like say if this is heavily covered but you see we got leaf 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 and then you got all this no leaf no leaf no leaf no leaf no leaf all the no leaves that's because the deer are going to snatch 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 and that's how we do a brow survey so we'll get away from here and we'll pick out these bushes that, that the deer uh, browse on and then that and we'll count so percentage of a hundred we'll hunt we'll count a hundred of these one two three four five how many of them have leaves and how many doesn't and that's that's how we and we do that year in and year out and that's how we determine what how much how many it do we have more browse than we need or do we have less where's our where's our line because we don't want to over essentially overgraze the browse and and it it doesn't do anything for it just damage if the if the deer don't have anything to eat they're not going to do any good so that's why we got to keep the population at a healthy um, number and that's kind of where we're at so and you can't you can't count supplemental feed you got to just go on what the browse is and if the if you don't have the browse you're not going to have big deer if you don't have the browse you're not going to have healthy deer so to have big healthy deer you have to have the browse and if you don't have it you you're just not going to do it. And if you're feeding, you know, too much corn, you're going to damage the deer by because by feeding too much corn. So this feeder here is kind of a little unique feeder because we have whitetails and mule deer coming to this same feeder. 
Um, so we try to keep the mule deer up in the, up in the cap rock. We kind of try to keep the whitetails in the creek bottoms. If the whitetails get up into the um, creek bottom, up into the cap rocks, then uh, we start dispatching the whitetails up there. So it's it's a lot of work. I'm telling you, it's a lot of stinking work. But and if you're not if you, if you don't have the passion for it, then you know it's not for you. But it's you know I, I love the deer side of it, and I've. You know, I have AI deer, I do embryo transfers, I, I clone deer, I clone a bunch of deer. And uh, I'm into it, I like deer. Um, I don't particularly like to hunt them, but I like to see big deer, so. And also stuff that we do, and we'll have more video of this, is when we shoot deer, we're shooting, I'll be shooting like management bucks and, and older does. And the reason we're doing that is because number one, we gotta keep the population in control because if you get too many, well, then nobody has enough food and, and um, you know, th then everything's kind of getting depressed on uh, having enough browse. So we, we keep a healthy browse to keep a healthy deer, if that makes sense. Um, so we'll be shooting like the management deer. So the management deer would be like uh, a lesser buck that I think genetically is inferior. And then we'll be shooting, we have to shoot a lot of does. And so we'll be taking the does out and the does that we're gonna be taking out are the older does. So the older does genetically should be inferior. If we're moving in the right direction, the younger does should have you know, better genetics. So we're always doing that. And it's, I'm not saying this is like we do this once a year. This is like every year for 15 years. This is what we do. And I've tried getting hunters to do it and hunters, you know, and truthfully hunters, when they come out here, they wanna hunt for a big deer. And, and it's work, it's, I mean, it's a crap crap ton of work to go to go hunt this hard I, I, I say hunt we're not really hunting we're, we're just dispatching deer and we're picking the deer up we're you know we're we got to gut the deer we got to get the meat you know either we eat the meat or we got to get the meat to somebody else so it's a lot of work it's a it's just a lot of work so other thing I do is I use these game cameras to help me manage my deer. So these game cameras are cellular service. They send me cell phone of uh, pictures or videos of all the deer so that I learn all the deer. Um, you know, most of the deer I know, you recognize them from year to year. And this is just another tool. I put a lot of these videos up and you know, if y'all like seeing these videos, let me know because I've got lots of these videos. And actually I'm working on doing a live stream where you can actually, uh, be able to come to the Mendota Ranch website and actually see a live stream of the deer coming into the feeders. But we'll put some more videos up. Another thing that I do for deer management is I don't do as much as I used to. You know, used to, um, used, used to I had a bunch of deer in the pens and I had the patent on cloning deer. So I used to, I was, I'm the only guy that can clone deer. So when I was cloning all these deer, the deer that wouldn't get pregnant with a clone, well, we would, uh, harvest one of our big bucks well i'd actually flush the epididymis of of that buck so i could flush the semen out of the epididymis i'd get me oh you know 30 40 straws of semen and freeze it and then we would breed those to those uh, recipient uh, does that didn't get pregnant with clones that year so then essentially that one buck after he's dead he'd he would essentially produce 40 offsprings and then we'd release them and since uh, the chronic wasting disease have shown up here in deer They've shut all that down, so I can't do that anymore, which is fine. We've got plenty, you know, it, it helps some, but doesn't help a lot. So this is a protein feeder. So it holds about 2,000 pounds, and it just gravity feeds into here. And the deer just come stick their nose in here, and they eat this feed. Now everybody, um, everybody, there's all kinds of people, all, Perina, all these people make deer feed, and it's very expensive. I don't feed that. I feed wheat mitt. So this is a byproduct of a flour mill. So I get a semi load of this stuff in, I feed it to my horses, and I feed it to my deer. I've been feeding this for, I don't know, 15 years. It's about 14% protein, 8% uh, fiber, 4% fat. It, it doesn't have any mineral in it, but it, it works great. You know, it's, it's, it's cheap, probably 150 to $200 a ton, depending on the year. Uh, that's delivered where like, you know, uh, a good deer feed is four or $500 a ton. And so I've got a bunch of these scattered around the ranch and the deer can come in here and they just free choice. Now we don't feed corn. Uh, you see a lot of this, this stuff that is corn, you know, deer corn, deer corn. Well, 
corn is bad for deer. Corn, you don't, you know, I understand a lot of people feed corn, they bait them in. So corn is, think of corn like Skittles. It, it just not, it has no nutritional value for a deer because it has too much starch in it. And the starch will actually um, screw the stomach up of a deer and, or the stomachs of a deer up. And eventually you'll see a bunch of thin deer walking around. They'll have the scars and uh, they die. So, so if you're feeding corn, make sure it's just, you know, in a spin fear, just, just, a, just a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want, you know, you don't want more than a mouthful. And just, just to bait them in and, and other than that, there's no use, there's no place for corn. So we do not feed corn. We feed this uh, wheat mids, which is a byproduct. Essentially, all the starches out of it is a good clean feed. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the right amount of 14% protein. That's all a deer needs, doesn't need any more than that. And also you'll see these panels. See how I've got these panels around here? These panels are for two reasons. Number one, we keep the cattle out of it, we keep the horses out of it, but we don't want to get like a, any kind of hog panel or something that's going to get them hung up in here. But more importantly, these panels are easy to move. So every year I move these deer feeders because the, the deer come in here and they pee and they poop and it's a high traffic area. So I want to make sure that if there's a disease going around that we don't have a, have a spot where they're getting contaminated. So every year in the spring, we move all these feeders. And we, these things don't get used much in the summertime. They don't, the deer just don't graze them much, but this time of year, they're hitting it pretty hard. So, um, but yeah. So that's pretty much kind of my deer program. If you want to know more, let me know. We grow some big, big, big honking deer. I mean, it's for us, um, for a low fence place to be able to grow, you know, well over 200 inch whitetails is a, it's a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good deal. Not many people can say they can do that. And we do it here, but we'll, um, we'll have some more videos up on how we manage deer, how we pick the deer out. Um, you'll see us, we, you know, of course we're long range shooters here. So we see us shooting deer from a long ways away and, um, and what the benefit of that is and, and why we do it that way. But that's, it's part of being a rancher, being a rancher, you have to, you know, you're not just managing the horses you're managing cattle, you're managing the wildlife. And this is part of being, uh, just part of the ranch life. So it's a lot of work, but I enjoy the deer. So, all right, well, that's all I got on deer feed and deer. I'm sure y'all got a lot of comments on what I feed and how I do it, but that's pretty much it. But thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. All right, thanks. See you.